Hi everyone, and thank you for joining us for this webinar. Today, I will talk to you about ways you can improve the TLS security of your website. In the spirit of Security Series Week, my goal is to provide you with some best practice tips which are easy to implement, and I hope you will find them useful. We will also give you the opportunity to ask questions at the end of the presentation. So, here's what you will learn today. The difference between SSL and TLS? To show who you are, to look after your server, and to enable always on SSL. So, let's get started. What is actually the difference between SSL and TLS? Well, initially it's not much, because in general, we refer to the same, encrypted and authenticated connections. But SSL is the old version of the protocol, which has been superseded by TLS, Transport Layer Security. Secure Socket Layer has some number of vulnerabilities. It's the less secure version of the protocol. But we will cover that later in this webinar. There are two key use cases for TLS. First, encrypt and secure. Nine out of the 10 users are more likely to trust a website if they display security indicators. And to prove your identity. A certificate does not only encrypt the connection, but it also authenticates the connections. It shows who's behind that connection. And that can be done in several levels, from simple and quick domain control validation, which will show that you have control over that domain, www.domain.com, but doesn't really show that you're authorized to have control over that domain. Or who is actually behind that domain. It could be an attacker who has registered a domain that actually looks very much like your domain, but it isn't your domain. If there's no clear display of who you are, your visitors could easily become victim of a crime, which is easily to prevent by showing who you are. Which leads us to tip one, show who you are. You can prove your identity by using an extended validation certificate. EV security is extremely visible, making it easy for users to identify who's behind the website. That look, for example, is a traditional security indicator. But it's even better to verify the presence of HTTPS at the beginning of the URL. Compared to traditional security, an extended validation certificate will show the green bar. The green bar contains the company name. When clicking on the green bar, you will get the company details. Now it's clear who you are. Another way to show who you are is to display the site seal. The site seal is an easy way to show a visitor of your website that you're using a secure connection. Surely, it's not as strong as HTTPS, the padlock, or the green bar. But it's an additional service that we as a CA provide to give an indicator to the visitor of your website and to say, okay, look, we care about your privacy, about your data, and we are securing it. By clicking on the site seal, they get more company details and they can verify who you are. Maybe they can print the data so they have a copy on, on paper and can go back to that if something may happen with their, with, with their information. But in general, it also remembers users, oh yes, I need to watch about the security. So when you have that login form, or that order form, or just the contact information form on your website, where users are requested to fill in some data, it's good to show a site seal that remembers them about security. 
that remembers them to look at the green bar or at the padlock or to think twice, can I really trust this website? It also gives them the feeling, oh yeah, if I would be questioning the security of the site, now it gives me an indication, oh yeah, they care about my security. And you can place the site seal on any place on the website you like, which could be clearly near an, an order or confirm button or submit button for a specific form. Then what we're going to look at tip two, which is to look after your server and specifically to look after the configuration of your server. Global Sign created a simple tool which is powered by Qualys SSL Labs. And that tool you can find on globalsign.sslabs.com is really simple to use. You just enter the fully qualified domain name, for example, www.globalsign.com. When you submit the form, it will automatically test if your server is compliant with all best practices. It tries to find a balance between security and compatibility because that is actually the biggest problem when we look at server configurations. We can simply say, this is the configuration you need to use. While with this tool, we try to give you a balanced setup that would work for most users. But if you are providing services to a closed community, which could be your company employees or your customer base, then you may want to use more strict configuration than this tool is giving you. But even that is something that the tool will clearly indicate that there are always improvements possible, but maybe that will have a small impact on the compatibility. So when entering the domain in this form, submitting it, we will test your server and we will show you with which browsers you will be compatible. If a Windows XP system with an old version of Internet Explorer is still able to visit your website or not. The balance between security and compatibility is something that has a lot of factors. And one of these factors is the cipher, which is used for the actual encryption. And if we're going to look back at SSL and TLS, then you see that since version SSL 3.0, we moved on to TLS. So we could also say that TLS is actually SSL version 4. If we look at this table and see, okay, how secure is the SSL protocol, then we basically see that it is insecure. It, it, it cannot provide you sufficient security, even when you take reasonable time to configure your server and to be very selective in what you would support, it still depends on, on many factors, if you can provide a secure connection or not. If we move to TLS 1.1 or 1.2, we see that there's a lot more certainty of an actual secure connection. And these are all combinations of the SSL protocol version and the cipher. And the server and the browser can communicate what they support. So the browser can say, okay, we support uh, SSL 3, TLS 1, TLS 1.1, and TLS 1.2. And the server can say, okay, yeah, I support also these protocols. And I give the preference to some specific ciphers so that it's more likely that when a browser or a visitor visits your website, you will actually pick that secure connection. But if we're going to look at this table and we would disable, for example, SSL3, what is the impact on the compatibility? Because if I have a 
closed community like my my employee base okay i can say or computers are secure we don't use windows xp anymore we're all on windows 7 8 or 10 and we don't really care about ssl3 on the other hand if you not have a closed user group and you provide services to the public internet that is much harder to actually answer because you don't really know what your potential customer is using for computer or browser and if they install all their security updates and there are some arguments to say okay yes i don't want to provide or uh, I, I, it, it, it doesn't add any value to provide security to an, 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 an user of an old outdated browser or an outdated operating system because basically if we look at their security level it, 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 there are so many holes in there that uh, maybe you shouldn't even care about TLS security but that's maybe not necessary because if we're going to look at the TLS support by the major browsers, then we see that at least TLS 1.0 is secured by all major browsers, even on Windows XP. Only if you would be using Internet Explorer 6 on Windows XP, TLS 1.0 is disabled by default. But okay. How many users are actually using Internet Explorer version 6 that is so many years old that most even most websites wouldn't even work on that browser? So if we would disable all SSL versions, the security level is much higher. Also, because even if we would say, okay, yes, we would support these new TLS versions, there is always the potential risk that an attacker finds a way to downgrade a user to an older TLS version or SSL version and apply an attack against that version. And that is something that happened before. In this graph, you see the statistics of supported SSL and TLS versions measured by netcraft for many servers on the internet and before poodle most servers were just enabling all protocols most likely okay probably they were disabling ssl2 um but ssl3 yeah okay well, we we could still use it and then and, and there's still some use case for it but now there was an attack on that specific protocol and then quickly everyone or the majority of the uh, server operators actually switched off SSL version 3 because it wasn't actually needed anymore and more and more users or server operators administrators are disabling SSL version 3 and you should do too so if we looking back at the tools we provide, you can simply see that SSL version two and three, or TLS version 1.0, 1.1, or 1.2 could be enabled or disabled. And the tool will report that if your server supports it by trying to make a connection over that protocol and showing you what your server is currently doing. It will also show you if it is good, like it's in, in, in this example, it's good that SSL2 and 3 are currently not supported. But from a compatibility point of view, it's good that SSL or TLS 1.0 is currently supported. While from a security point of view, you may only want to use the last version, TLS 1.2. But as we can see in this slide, 
there are still quite a few browsers which are currently not supporting TLS 1.2. So for those users, you still want to be able to support TLS 1.0. Unless you have that closed user group and say, okay, no, all users are using Chrome version 30 or newer, Firefox 38 or newer, Internet Explorer 11, Opera 17 or Safari 7. And so actually, if you're using up-to-date systems, you can safely switch to TLS 1.2. Else, you may want to use TLS 1.0 as a legacy support. The same for ciphers. Configuration of ciphers is complicated because there are many and which you should enable or maybe not is not only very dependent on the current state of browsers and operating systems of cryptographic power to break these ciphers. It's changing a lot. And therefore, it's good to run these tests against your server on a regular basis. Do not only test your website configuration or your TLS configuration once a year or every time you renew your certificate, but try to make it an, an, an ongoing activity where on a monthly basis, you just run the, the, the test See if you're still compatible, if you may need to make some changes, because security is changing from time to time. So regularly check your preferences, simply running the test, and in a few seconds you know if you need to make changes to, be, to provide secure connections to your users. Then, there is a need to deal with server breaches. While we never hope that a server is breached, there are many reasons why that could happen. And if that happens, you need to have a proper action plan to mitigate any risks. And one of the actions in that plan should be to revoke your certificate. Because when an attacker gained access to your server, it will be able to obtain a copy of your private key. And with that private key, it could set up men in the middle attacks to pretend to be you and to steal private information from your customers and potentially to use that information on other websites or maybe on your own service. By revoking the certificates and generating new private keys, even if the user or the attacker would have obtained a copy of your private key, it would not be able to use it because the certificate you provided is now showing or announcing that it is compromised and should not be trusted. But revocation information is something that is published by a certification authority and that also need to be obtained. And how can that be obtained? For example, by OCSP, the Online Certificate Status Protocol. An OCSP request is a request that is made to the certification authority for each connection that is established to your website. It will tell the user that that certificate is still valid or not. By enabling OCSP stapling, you have a couple of benefits. First, the OCSP response is already included in the TLS handshake and therefore does not have to be obtained separately from the certification authority. 
that has a benefit in performance because it saves the lookup on the client side and it has a benefit on privacy because they're not exposed who is connecting to your server. OCSP stapling is easy to enable in all web servers. As you can see on this slide for Apache and Nginx, it's just a one or two line configuration change. So that was tip, th tip two, to take care of your server. Do not only install your certificate, but review your configuration and use the tools available to do it properly and review that configuration from time to time. Tip three is to enable always on SSL. What does that mean? Always on SSL means that SSL is always enabled. It's always turned on. Why would we turn on SSL by default? First, really important that if you provide a secure connection and you wouldn't provide that secure connection on the whole website, but only on your login screen, there is the risk that if you not mark your cookies to be served on secure connections only, that that cookie would be shared with your unsecure website. And a user could just simply copy the login session from that cookie because it's transmitted over an unsecure connection. This type of attack is abused frequently as it's so easy to perform. Another benefit of enabling always on SSL is that the user can always perform the identity verification because the green bar is not only shown when the account information is requested, but on all pages, or maybe even far before it's trying to request information or to do that purpose, pur purpose from your website. It's also about content integrity. When using a secure connection, data is not only encrypted, but also the integrity is guaranteed. It's not possible for an attacker to embed abusive code in the TLS session because that would break the signature on the data and it would improve your Google ranking because Google said recently that they prefer a secure and private internet where governments or any third party cannot control or, or list or see what you're actually doing on the internet. And therefore, when a website guarantees the privacy of a visitor, you will rank slightly higher in the Google search engine. And not least, doing SSL by default could have a huge performance benefit. When your server supports HTTP2 or Speedy, secure websites can load up to almost in this example, 500% faster than a non-secure connection. And we know that uh, Google, Amazon, and a lot of other large sites did researches on what percentage of users would drop off after a few milliseconds of delay. And if you can win even seconds, you can win a lot of users and increase efficiency and 
increase the number of views on your website from the users because the website is just responding a lot quicker than with a non-secure version. That doesn't have anything to do with the encryption itself, but mainly with the way the protocol works. HTTP2 and Speedy are only supported when using a secure connection. And these protocols allow to tunnel multiple requests concurrently where they have to may be made separately when using an unsecure connection. So how do we enable always on SSL? Always on SSL is one of the easiest things to enable. It's just adding a simple header to the response of your website. In Apache, you can do that with a single line in your configuration or in a HDAccess file. And in Nginx, you can simply change a line in the configuration or add a line in the configuration. If you're using a dynamic website running in um, .NET, PHP, or whatever language you are using, you can also add these headers from the application site. And again, also here, the tools from GlobalSign are giving you the ability to simply verify if you set these header. And then we have one more tip. We wanted to add this to the webinar as it got a lot of attention over the last few days. And you may sometimes come across confusing information. From January 2017, Windows will stop trusting all SHA-1 certificates. That will mean that if you would still be using a SHA-1 certificate, a user that is visiting your website will get an error message that that certificate is not trusted. Chrome is already giving warnings about these issues today. It will still connect to your website but it wouldn't show you the green padlock. Our advice on this is simple. Upgrade your SHA-1 certificates to SHA-256 as soon as possible. You can do this free of charge from your GlobalSign account. You can also use our SSL checker to determine if your certificates need to be upgraded. Or use the certificate inventory tool to scan complete internal or external networks. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. So if you have any questions, send them to me on Twitter at @globalsign, or just go to our Facebook page or LinkedIn, contact your account manager and ask these questions there when we make sure that everything you will need will be answered as soon as possible. Thanks for your time and have a good day. Bye.